Good morning everyone and welcome back to another video here in a much cooler central Portugal. Um, we're having a lazy start to today. It's almost 10 o'clock and we're only just starting work but we knew that where we're working is in full shade until mid-afternoon and we'll be finished before then. What we're working on is quite exciting. We are now doing the decking or at least the framing for the deck of our garden house. So we started yesterday by putting out the structure for the frame of our toilet and shower cubicle. It's going to be an all-in-one. It's quite small, quite neat and compact as you can see from the frame and then it will just naturally flow and extend into the deck that will come out of the front of the garden house. So our job today is to finish putting in some of the stakes. We're going with the same system that we used when we built the garden house to use stakes to level the deck because we're working on lots of different levels. Um, it's a hillside, it goes down that way, it also comes down this way. So using the stake method is much easier than trying to level the ground, which just really wouldn't happen. Yeah, that's our job for today. So once we've got the rest of the stakes in for support, we'll then be starting on the uprights here to make the cabin for our toilet and shower. So a few weeks ago, we picked up this table um, from a neighbours. They said they didn't want it. So uh, we thought, well, we'll have that as we so often do. But it's turned out to be a really good tool in order to hold pieces of wood for sawing. So on these stakes, we're actually cutting points into them so that we can actually get them into the ground. And this table has been fitted with these two pieces of wood, which look as though they've been put in place specifically for the job of holding pieces of wood in order to secure them for sawing or for chopping or for whatever it might be. So this is actually coming in a lot handier than we thought it would. We thought we we're just gonna make a table out of it, which we will, but at the moment it's being a really good use table saw. As a table saw, exactly. That's all of our base frame in place. It's good and solid and ready for the deck boards. We don't have those yet, but what we're ready to do is build up the structure for our shower and toilet. And to help us get the uprights upright and the levels level, we've been using this. And this is a uh, laser level from Lasgoo and they're sponsoring this video. Thanks very much Lasgoo. We have our uprights cut to the correct length and now we're going to use the laser level to get a true vertical up so that we know it's going to be straight. Cut. There. 
There. There. There. There. There. And there. If we get those in, then we know it should be level after all of those, yeah? Because our post was going exactly where the laser level was sat, what I had to do was use the line that it cast up the exterior wall and make small marks. Now I've lined my post up with those marks and Darren thinks it's bang on straight. Bang on straight. <laughs> And now he's just left me standing here with this piece of wood that I can't move while he gets all his bits ready. <laughs> okay. Are you ready with your drill, love? We're going with the drill first. Yep. Here. So remember where you're going about on the, the thicker end spot about on, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Looks really good. It's still all on the marks, so it's got to be good. Yep, still in. Still in. Yep. So it's starting to get a little bit warm now outside, so we're going to leave the construction work for the day. We'll come back again this evening around five o'clock when it starts getting uh, getting a little bit cooler again out there. But I thought this was an opportunity for me to show you the Lasgu laser level that we've been using in order to get all of the posts um, in the right orientation really and as straight as we can. So it's a really cool piece of kit. I've never used a laser level before but it's really really easy. Um, it comes in this lovely little box um, with all of the kit ready to go. Uh, so we've got the laser level itself. We have a spare battery in there as well, which is really nice. A USB charging cable. It comes with the laser target as well. Really, really nice. And if you're going to attach your laser level to a tripod, let's get that out. It's also got like a laser level housing as well. So you can attach this to the tripod to get your levels right. Very nice piece of kit, does a really, really good job. This is the 3D laser level as well. So it has three dimensions. So you have all of the uh, orientations that you would possibly need to do any sort of uh, DIY jobs around the house. And as one of our friends once said, really useful even if you're just putting up a picture, for example, just to ensure, whoops. <laughs> just to ensure that the picture is straight um, or wonky. We've moved on quite a bit since we were last filming. So we've been coming down every morning and every evening for a couple of hours and we've managed to complete the framework for the decking where our shower toilet cubicle is going to be. So let's have a look inside. Obviously there's no decking on as yet. So nice and careful. So we have a doorway and then it will have a sloped roof on and we've got our angles cut to accommodate that um, on the outer and the inner uprights. Um, what we were working on today was to uh, block in the toilet area so we're making a, a box basically and this is the next section that we're going to work on. So we've used the ends of these long timbers 
that we have for the garden house and we've fixed them all in to block a box which will house our big bucket and then a couple of doors at the back they'll open up and we'll be able to remove the bucket out of the back. So I've got my three planks here worked out that will fit this section. They just need cutting down and screwing in. That's our next job. And then the final job for this evening is to measure this wall and this wall. Oh, next time we go shopping to find something suitable as a privacy screen around there. This will be the Hello, <laughs> this will be the door and it'll need something on there as well. That's going to be the view, our poo with a view or our shower with a view when we're done. Apple tree, pear tree, rolling hills, lovely. Here in the toilet section, um, there'll obviously be a lid that covers this whole box. So we're going to set the bucket to one side so that we have plenty of space on this side for a wood chip container so you can put your wood chips in. Then the top will also have a normal toilet seat on there with a lid to close down. And for all of those of you who are thinking well your toilet's just going to get wet every time you have a shower, we'll have a shower curtain that comes round to keep the toilet section completely dry so the water runs down and because we're putting decking on here for the floor it'll run through and we've uh, sourced some, uh, some containers that will sit underneath and capture most of the water that runs off. There, so I've taken that knot off, is that? Oh nice, yeah. Cool, so that one is 33 as well. Yeah. So I'll take that down there. <laughs> What we're doing is just double checking our measurements. Uh, we're ready now for the deck boards and we'll probably pop into Castella Branco tomorrow and get those so we can get this bit finished and make it easier and safer to walk on. Well here's another day and we haven't had a chance to go to Castella Branco for the decking boards so that will probably be next week's video but what I thought I would do is show you the pear cinnamon buns that we talked about last time because a lot of people were interested. So I've got my big bowl I'm not going to do a recipe because everybody has their own sort of enriched or recipe that they like but mine is plain flour, a bit of brown sugar, I've got some hazelnut milk that I need to use up dried yeast, one egg, a bit of margarine and a little pinch of salt. There are loads of recipes online so I tend to just eyeball it so I couldn't even tell you how much of each thing I use but we're just going to get all of the dry ingredients into the bowl then I'll rub in the margarine then I'll add my egg and my milk as my wet ingredients and get it to a nice soft consistency.
and that's as simple as that. I'll cover it and leave it somewhere out of direct sunlight but fairly warm which is anywhere here and give it about an hour to prove. Our dough is almost proved so I'm going to get the pears ready to go inside. These are the pears that I poached several weeks ago and they've been in the refrigerator in their juice and you can see the lemon zest and the ginger in there with them. So I'm going to slice them very finely and they'll all be ready to go in our scrummy cinnamon buns. Because I poached them whole, I'm just going to leave out the little stem part because that's a bit tough. But you can see how the colour has changed and it's sucked up all the flavours from the cinnamon as well as the lemon and ginger and they smell delicious. So here's my dough, it's well risen, it's nice and soft and springy, see how it's pushing back out? It's lovely and active and that's ready to start rolling out and make our buns. My plan for this is to try and roll it out into a large rectangle and then cover it with our filling and flavourings. You can see how the door keeps um, shrinking back. It's just because it's in a very elastic state. Um, what I usually do then is I try and shape it to the shape that I want. It will spring back, but then just give it a moment or two and then roll again and you'll get there. I think that's quite a good size, so I'm going to work with that. I'm now going to sprinkle it with some extra cinnamon, a bit of brown sugar, and then I'm going to spread my pears over and roll it up. I'm going to start by putting all of my fruit at this edge first and then rolling it that way and leave this end empty of fruit so that I can get a good stick to hold the buns closed. Make sure you take your fruit right up to the edge because you don't want to be the one that gets the empty bun. Trying to keep my shape as best I can. You will get wonky ones on the end but they still taste excellent. Just roll it over nice and gently all the way along and this is why you want a fruit free section at the end here so when you roll it down you can get a nice fix and sort of glue your dough together and then try and sort of shape it so it's an equal width all the way along. I've got my baking pan, it's a circular one with some greaseproof paper in and now we're just going to cut up our long sausage into equal thicknesses Put them into our baking pan and let it prove again so that they can swell up and be as big and tasty as possible. What I like to try and do is find the middle. So I use the blade of my knife to do sort of a measure. Oh, so it's about two and a half. So if I go one and a half. So we just need about an inch which is about two and a half three centimeters each piece and I'm trying to get a total of 12 buns to go in my pan there we go just shape them a little bit you see we've got a good seal on there pop it in So that's all the buns in the pan. I'll cover them again and leave them to prove. Probably about 30 to 40 minutes until they swell up and start touching each other. Then they'll go in a hot oven and bake until they're golden. They're all ready for the oven. Put it into preheated oven and bake until they're well risen and golden brown. ta -da! So that's the buns out of the oven. They're golden. They're crispy on the outside, 
soft on the inside. And my kitchen smells amazing. I'm gonna let those cool and then I'm gonna put a simple drizzle icing on the top. I've made a simple icing with some icing sugar and the flavored juice from the pears. And I'm just gonna drizzle that over and Darren's standing behind the camera waiting to eat them. There you go, cinnamon buns with poached pears. They're just still warm and the kettle's boiled, so we're gonna go and scoff a few of them. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much for spending some time with us today. Take care and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.